Hi guys, today I'm going to show you guys how you can set up an approval flow in Microsoft Power Automate. It's actually quite a simple process, but yet very, very powerful. So let's jump right into it. We're going to start off by clicking on my flows on the left hand side here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new flow. We're going to um, um, we're going to do this one as an instant for the purpose of today's tutorial, but you can have this automated or scheduled. It's entirely up to you. Most people will probably have an automated flow for this um, as a trigger. I'm just going to use a, a click of a button um, because I'm going to use that as the way to do this. Um, and we're going to basically go with approve um, approval flow. There we go. Um, we're just going to create that. Okay, so this is going to launch this screen. I don't like this one, you know this by now. I usually turn off this new designer and uh, continue without saving uh, and put it back into the old classic view. I find this one so much easier to navigate than the new one, but that's probably just because I haven't spent a huge amount of time exploring the new functions. Anyway, here we have a manual trigger, right? So this is our brand new flow. And what we want to do is we want to basically trigger an approval process that um we can approve via our emails or through um, microsoft teams and then once we have the approval we can do something else right so it's kind of like a pit stop let's say someone does some work let's upload a document maybe to sharepoint um, for you to review uh, and basically it can start an approval flow that you know once that's been reviewed and you've approved the document you could basically then submit that to uh, back to the person so that they can do something else with it you can kind of use these approvals in multiple different steps um, but I'm just going to go show you the basics of this so you can implement this in your own way and if you have any comments or ideas on what else you might want me to kind of look at um, or something a bit more specific when it comes to the approval flows let me know in the comments and we'll try to create a video for that as well so let's go ahead and we'll start by just um, actually going in and, and going for um, approve okay if we type in approve here what it's going to do is it's going to bring us all of the options um, to kind of allow for these approval flows okay and as you can see there's lots of different options in our list here okay uh, you have things like shifts in within Microsoft Teams as examples to this um, and uh, it might actually be that we start I'm gonna go ahead and actually type the word start and um, because normally there is a start and wait for an approval okay so here you can see this is an approvals area so this button right here it gives you all of the approvals options so you can see you can create an approval you can start and wait for an approval start and wait for an approval of text or wait for an approval okay now for the most part, if you're creating the flow, uh, the most common one of these that you're going to use is the start and wait for an approval. You don't want to actually create an approval, believe it or not. Um, what you want to do is you want to start and wait because what this is allowing you to do is it allows you to create the approval and then allows you to gather responses from people as to whether or not it's approved or rejected, right? Um, and of course, some of these other options, uh, whether it's text or whatever, can be useful. But for the most part, I would say that 99% of the time, this is the one that you're going to want to use. Start and wait for an approval. If we give that a click, it's going to look like this. And you have your first option, which is the approval type. Now in here, you can see it says approve, reject. Everyone must approve. Approve, reject. First to respond. Custom responses. Wait for all responses or custom responses. Wait for one response. And then at the bottom here, you've got sequential approval. OK, now for the most part, depending on the kind of structure that you have, it's usually going to be this one here, which is the approve, reject first to respond. So you can send the approval request to, let's say, 10 different supervisors if it's a large organization and only one of them will have to approve your document okay now i've used this before for like holiday requests within a small team for example uh, where people can request time off and it can go to a list of different managers and they can approve it or reject it and so forth right um, so for the most part this is the one to use but you also have custom responses which are really useful as well but for the purpose of today's video we're going to focus on approve reject first to respond now if we give that a click it's going to open up some more options for us 
we get to give it a title okay this title is what is going to be seen by the person who is um requ uh, being uh, requested to approve or to reject or multiple people so for the post most part of today's video i'm just going to go and type the word test in here next we'd have a list of email addresses in my organization there is only me so i'm just going to go ahead and type in nick and there i am okay so i'm going to send this request essentially to myself then you can put details in now depending on what triggered this flow okay or triggered this start and wait approval would have dynamic content that you can add now we don't have anything for the purpose of this video but i'm going to go ahead and just add up here a compose Okay, if I do this, um, what I can do is I can then just type in some text here. Now I'm just going to data dump it like this, or I could go to an expression and type string and put it into an expression. But I'm just going to leave it like this. It's really simple. And then what I can do is inside our details area here, I can use the step earlier, which is the output of our compose as our details for our approval. Now, obviously this gives you an idea that you could use lots of different pieces of information within the details of this request. You could even dynamically change the title to something different if it had a document name. Let's say something was in SharePoint and you wanted to get the name of the document that could be put in here with a request to approve, for example. Right? Or details might be in the kind of um, metadata of a file or might be a SharePoint list or a Teams list. It could be anything, right? Um, and so you kind of get the idea. You can dynamically keep these approvals um, kind of relevant to the content that needs to be approved. Now, there are some advanced options here as well, such as being able to attach attachments, which is really useful. You have the ability to enable notifications and enable reassignment and, uh, and all that. And of course, you've got the requester as well down here. OK, uh, this is the email of the person generating the request, which again might be from an email or something to that effect. OK, so here's your basics. It's kind of uh, pretty straightforward. What we've got early type, we've got a title for it. We've assigned it to someone and we've given it some details. We don't need much more than that. We could attach attachments if we wanted to. Um, you let your minds run wild with that, if you will. OK, so now what we want to do something once we have the output of this. OK, so for that, what we're going to do is we're going to use a control and the control that we're going to use is a condition. OK, so what we want to do is we want to know whether the approval outcome, which you can see from the dynamic content here, the outcome is equal to true. Now, this is case sensitive and I always forget which way this goes, but we'll debug this towards the end of the video uh, so we know whether or not this is going to be case sensitive or not, whether it's all caps, uh, whether it's proper or whether it's just low case like this. Anyway, if the approval outcome is true, uh, then we want to do something. It might also be approve uh, with an A, so it could be approve like this uh, with a capital A. I'm going to leave it like that. We'll come back to that in a moment. If it is, then we want to do something. So I'm just going to use another compose for the purpose of today's video. I'm just going to drop one in here and we're just going to say approved like this. OK, and if it's not, then we might want to do something else. We might want to uh, send an email or something like that. But again, I'm going to go ahead and just go with compose and I'm just going to say rejected. OK, like so. OK, so basically we now have our manual trigger OK, we have just a test for Compose, some content of some kind. We start and wait for an approval. We send it to someone with the details and then we get the result of whether it's approved or rejected. If it's approved, we want to do this. If it's not approved, then it's going to do something different. OK, and you can kind of have lots of different kind of ways to kind of split this off into lots of different way, uh, different angles, depending on the type of approval request that you're doing. OK, so I'm going to save this in and then what we're going to do is we're going to test it. OK. Um, he says, we're going to test, we're going to manually trigger it, we're going to click test. Usually it comes up for sign-ins, we're just going to continue on that, and then we're going to run the flow. And now this what might come up with rejections, it might come up with some errors, we're going to debug it and we're going to see what is going on with this manual process at the moment. OK, and we'll also show you the output of what we get um, coming through the emails and through Microsoft Teams as well. So as you can see, it, we've triggered it, we've created the title and we're in the start and wait for an approval process. If I come over to my Outlook, you can see right here we have the header, which is test. OK, if I click into this, 
this, you can see here that test, and then we've got the text, which is the details within there. Okay, so you can see that this is what we called the approval, and this is the details of the approval. Now I can approve it and I can reject it directly in my email. And I can also come on over to Microsoft Teams, where I can come over to this request inside Microsoft Teams, which is my activity. And I can also do the same thing here. Okay, you have the title, you have the details of it, and I can retract or approve it. I can also add comments. There's lots of different things that you can do. You've also got more actions here uh, and so forth, such as reassign if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and click approve. Okay, and that's going to clear it off not only within uh, Microsoft Teams, but it is also going to, let me just to go ahead and bring this back down. It's also going to mean that I don't have to do it here within my emails anymore either. That will also disappear. So if we go back to our flow here, you can see that now we've got a big green tick that's done and we have the conditions. You can see here that it did come back as true, which means it was approved, which is what we were looking for. Okay, we can see that we've then got the output here of approved okay whereas this one didn't do anything okay so we know that that is now a fully working flow let's come back to it so we can just walk you through all of those steps once more so you guys can be confident in applying this for your own purposes okay so it doesn't really matter what your trigger is it could be an email coming in whatever it is in this particular example we've got some content here using the compose right we just put some text in there as a data dump now that can be uh, the body of an email. It could be lots of different things. Then we have a start and wait for an approval with a title, which again, I've just put static text in here, but we could use some dynamic data if we wanted to. We then assign it to someone. Again, if you have Excel lookup sheets, you could dynamically assign that to someone else based on lookups from um, an Excel sheet if there is something within the flow that allows you to identify who to send the request to. Again, it could also be something that you use within Microsoft um, SharePoint uh, lists or Teams teams lists, anything like that, that could have an identifier as to who to uh, assign it to. We then have the details, which again, I've just dumped in. Um, and then of course, you know, we have the ability to do lots of different things there. Once that is requested, what we've then gone and done is if, it, if the outcome is approved, then we want to go ahead and approve it here. We can do something. We could send an email. We could uh, do lots of different things, upload a document, whatever. Okay. And if it's rejected, we could do something different. Okay. Now just note that this is case sensitive. Okay. And it is a capital A for approve. Uh, I get that wrong most of the time, but if you go through the testing debugging process, it will be very clear as to what went wrong. Um, but for the most part, that is it. It is a very straightforward process once you get to know exactly what ones, uh, or at least what uh, approvals to actually use within Microsoft Power Automate. Okay, guys, hopefully that makes sense and you can now go ahead and implement your own approval flows in Microsoft Power Automate. If this worked for you, make sure to give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out massively, helps me help you. Uh, and let me know in the comments down below whether or not uh, there's other kind of approval flows that you want me to to take a look at on these videos happy to do so so do let me know in the comment section down below smash a like button subscribe for more and if you haven't done so check that video out over there it's one you probably don't want to miss